Eleanor Roosevelt said in You Learn by Living, 11 Keys for a More Fulfilling Life, she said, you gain strength, courage and confidence by every experience in which you really stop to look fear in the face. You are able to say to yourself, I have lived through this horror. I can take the next thing that comes along. You must do the things you think you cannot do. George Eliot, it is never too late to be what you might have been. I was obliged to be industrious. Whoever is equally industrious will succeed equally well. That was J.S. Bach. I was born in England in 1933 to working class parents. I, of course, was uh, in the Second World War. I remember even being found underneath the kitchen table one morning after I'd gone to bed in my usual bed at night because the bombs were dropping. Uh, I went to grammar school. I wasn't a very good student. I was a late developer. Support for Sharing Life comes from ATEC Marketing, your resource for digital marketing, web, and app development tools. Greetings, I am John Knox. This is Sharing Life. This is episode number six. This episode is called... Arthur Dixon, Past and Present. Today on Sharing Life, a podcast produced by Welcome Studios, Senior Citizen Media, we are going to get to know Arthur Dixon. Arthur is a very passionate 86-year-old man. Since the age of 15, he has been working at his goals with great joy and dedication. His kindness and enthusiasm causes me to desire the maturity he has. A good role model shines light on a once dark path. Get to know him a little by listening to this episode of Sharing Life. Arthur, I understand that you are doing really well these days. Yes, I'm blessed in that I've got lots of strength still. Uh, My mind is uh, fairly good. I occasionally find it difficult to remember somebody's name or to recall a word. Uh, But as far as I'm aware, I've no dementia. And apart from having uh, type 2 diabetes for about 30 years, I'm reasonably uh, uh, healthy. Um, I stimulate my mind by reading a book a week at least and of course study for sermons and lectures. Uh, I also have read any number of novels aloud uh, to my wife. I remember reading all three volumes of Tolkien's uh, great series More recently, in retirement, uh, I, with my colleague Meg, and we have produced uh, Seasons of Clear Shining, which is a commentary uh, on great hymns of the faith. And, uh, and then Meg also put To Trust Again on uh, Amazon, 
as an e-book. That's a lot of hard work, Arthur. That's a lot of working and studying. I understand that one of your hobbies was riding horses. I understand that some people that you helped thanked your family by giving you one of the horses that you were helping them care for. What was it like to have your own horse? I'd never been near a horse in my life until this time, but I took three lessons and uh, was helped by someone I counseled uh, who used to train horses, and I rode that horse for 30 years. I later found out that it was the granddaughter of the famous man of war, the uh, American race horse that only lost one uh, race in all its existence. Uh, with advice from my friend and colleague Meg, I said I would have the horse for nothing. I found out once they gave me the paper that uh, it was uh, the grandson of Northern Dancer and had come second in the Queen's Plate in Toronto. So I had two of the greatest bloodlines in North America and didn't pay anything for either of them. So it was in the late 60s, early 70s, that you got into horses. Along with the horses, we had a goat and chickens and uh, uh, dogs and cats, but we had a garden, and I loved the garden and uh, was very fond of doing all kinds of things with Vegetables, for instance, I was growing five different kinds of potatoes at one time. Um, and during this time also, uh, I was doing the uh, various things that one has to do in the upkeep of a house. Finally, something fun. Horses to ride and small animals. A hobby farm. How about now, with all your hobbies do you have time to help people? I still spend time visiting uh, sick people. Uh, my daughter-in-law, Diane, has uh, primary progressive multiple sclerosis and uh, spends most of her time in bed now and has to be fed with a, a spoon and my wife does a lot of that, and I take my wife along to her as Marianne uh, no longer drives. And usually I take a walk with the dog, which uh, is an experience that I'm uh, finding helpful in retirement. I walk between three and four miles every day, and... Uh, and then I not only chauffeur Marianne, but uh, I have a colleague who used to be the editor of a magazine I produced in the mission I led. And uh, she uh, has bought a place, and I've oh, sawn down numerous trees and... Uh, I've even produced three bush cords of uh, wood for her winter uh, fire supply. And for those who uh, are not familiar with the term bush cord, one bush cord is eight feet by four feet by four feet, which is a considerable uh, amount of wood. You left school at the age of 15. How did you get so far in life without the help of teachers? The moment I became a Christian, I began to be educated. I was a slow learner. Uh, as a matter of fact, in those days, when I, when I left school, uh, I was so small that I had to have what we called a duck board when I went to work in a carpenter's shop in order to reach the bench where I would plane the wood. 
and I had size 5 shoes. Uh, I now have <laughs> size 12s, and uh, so I grew up physically, but I also applied myself uh, from the age of uh, 15, 16 to 21. I, would, I spent uh, three to four hours of study every night, uh, as, uh, five, uh, five or six n- nights a week. And I've been uh, studying, still study. Uh, even today, uh, I'm constantly reading and learning. So I've amassed a fair amount of knowledge uh, simply by personal study. I'm always prepared to listen to people. Um, and uh, when I find someone who knows m- more than I do, which is often, then I listen and uh, then I can uh, imbibe uh, what they have received maybe from their university days. But I'm, I'm always ready to listen and I think that's part of the reason uh, that I've had some success and I love people uh, and uh, so if I can impart something to someone or if I can receive something from someone I'm very very happy uh, and so to quote my friend Mr. Notley who worked for Taylor Woodrow uh, whatever one has needs to be qualified by experience and uh, I mean the first time that uh, uh, I met someone who was suicidal uh, I I had no uh, psychological background but I could listen and learn uh, and I have seen some very amazing most amazing uh, things happening in people's lives Arthur is a pretty surprising guy. At 84, he is doing home renos, gardening, averaging a book a week, encouraging audiences as a traveling speaker, and he also has a website. Every moment for me is a sacred moment, and it's all lived to the glory of God. As as a matter of fact, the verse that I take for my life verse is 1 Corinthians 10.31, Uh, where it says whether you um, eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So that means that every moment I spend is I'm seeking to live to the glory of God. It's an amazing thing. If you've ever done camping or carried a knapsack for a whole day, you'll know when you take it off your shoulders at the end of the day, you seem to be soaring up into the sky. And I must admit that the morning after I received the Lord Jesus, it seemed as if a great burden had been lifted up from me. I'd occasionally looked at the Bible because we were taught scripture in grammar school. But the morning after I became a Christian, the Bible became a book that I had to read and I've been reading it ever since uh, that day and still do uh, not only daily for devotions but I sometimes will read a whole book at a time such as Job. One of the things that I've always maintained is that, that listening is the lost L in learning. We need to listen And uh, most of what I have achieved in my life has been because I either read or listened to other people. When I meet people who know more than I do, and that's quite frequent, I listen to them. And uh, sometimes I find that when people have a problem, all I need to do is to listen. They often solve their own problem simply because they articulate it and I'm there to listen and maybe feed a little question to them. And I think that uh, I've had, by the grace of God, both learning experience uh, and uh, a measure of success. 
I would like to see more. But there have been literally hundreds of people who have told me, for instance, uh, there was a vice president, uh, the wife of a vice president of one of Canada's great, greatest companies came running to me in a meeting that uh, uh, I attended and said, Arthur, you saved my marriage. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's always encouraging. Now let's have a small intro into your Amazon books. I started on your book, To Trust Again, A 30-Day Companion. Where did you come up with the resources to write this book? Every experience I have uh, teaches me something that I can then apply to the next experience and the next. Um, So in the main, I think... Uh, I, I've said the word listening quite frequently and I think that's where most of my knowledge comes from uh, either from the person who is hurting or p- sometimes uh, when I read of someone else who has helped somebody in a particular way and I can emulate uh, that um, So someone once said that my knowledge comes from various taps and I can't always say which tap it comes from, like water coming out of a tap. Uh, So there are so many taps that I turn on or have turned on. The research for this book has come from decades of counseling couples. With Arthur's resources, you too may find new taps of knowledge for restoring your relationships. I'm interested in your understanding of love. Love is in the will. And I think that's very important to show people that if they're going to love, it's in the will. They need to will to love, which means actions follow that desire. I never tried to solve several problems initially. One problem at a time uh, is how I used to operate. So if somebody came to me and they had, a couple had six problems, I didn't try to solve six all at once. I would seek to, within the week, I used to see people once a week, uh, and in, in the week, if I could solve one problem, I could say, and this was my motto, I think, that came uh, from uh, Oscar Wilde, nothing succeeds like success. So if I could get success in one aspect, that gave them encouragement to succeed in the second one, and in the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, and about Two weeks ago, I met somebody at a meeting who said, Arthur, we're still together. And that was 30 years before that I had counseled them. Uh, And uh, uh, he was, uh, 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 what shall I say, a very, very uh, angry uh, man who mentally abused his wife. But they're still together because I was able to teach him uh, what it felt like to receive that kind of treatment. I'm very inspired by Arthur's achievements in his personal development and in his career. Arthur didn't stop to do any post-secondary degrees. He just worked extremely hard for decades and was awarded an honorary doctorate of divinity degree. Ask him about it. To get in touch with Arthur, go to his website, mymeatanddrink.com. There you can discover his deeper passions and what really drives him. Thank you for being a listener.
You have been listening to Sharing Life. I am John Knox, your host. To give feedback and to discuss whether you would like to be interviewed for a future episode, contact me using my email, sharinglifepodcast at gmail.com. Also, I have an independent board who reviews all decisions made concerning these broadcasts. Thank you for being a listener.